Hello and welcome everyone. My name is DMC and I am bringing you version 31. This is the newest update for Paragon and we've got some interesting stuff in this one. It looks like a lot of positive changes in this update. They're titling it Jungle Refresh, More Card Reworks, New Skins and Hero Balance Changes and I will get into all of that stuff. First we're looking at the skins here. The new skins are pretty cool. They got like a blue and black theme for Twin Blast. They've got Grand Oracle skin they're calling it which is green and gold for Sevrog. A really crazy skin here for Murdoch. It's called the Biofreak skin. He has now got a red dinosaur head. It's pretty crazy looking. I don't think anyone was expecting that. Rampage Obsidian. He kind of looks like one of the evil Decepticons in the new Transformers movies. He looks pretty awesome. I would like to pick up that skin, actually. So let's get into some hero changes and minion changes first. We'll get into cards later. The first big one they have here is they're reducing the super minion count by one per wave. So that'll make those waves a lot less powerful. That's an interesting change right there. Another one that's big, big change here is minions prioritize attacking towers over fighting with enemy minions. So that could be a huge change to the way things play out. I'm assuming what that means is once your minions are under the enemy's tower, they will go for the tower as opposed to going for the minions. So that's a little bit more tower damage, but it also means that your minions maybe will get killed a little bit faster as well. But that should be an interesting change. Should be a positive change, hopefully. Now let's get into some hero changes. Got some interesting stuff here. It looks like they've done something that I think a lot of people have been requesting. They have improved the targeting camera of certain ground targeting abilities for the Fey, Twin Blast, Decker, Severog, Steel, Gideon, Iggy and Scorch, Sparrow, Howitzer, and Muriel. So hopefully those will be good changes. I hope that's what people have been asking for. I think that's what they're referring to. They also th said they adjusted the ability and travel mode cameras to improve accuracy and the recall cameras have been polished. A lot of graphics updates in this one. The blue and red buffs also have themes now. The blue buff, I think, has an insect theme, and the red buff has a lava theme, and then the black buff has a beast theme. So I think there's going to be some pretty nice graphical changes. They're also having graphics for the OP buff when that comes in, so that's going to be interesting. But let's get into some hero stuff, guys. This is the first one. It's pretty big. Gadget. They've added Order as her second affinity, and they've made it so her sticky mind now is faster and has stronger gravity, and her Tesla Dome targeting range has increased from 1,000 to 1,250 units and seek and destroy now damages wards properly so those are some scary changes for gadget gadget is actually already a really strong lane pusher and can be pretty scary if a good player is playing gadget so that's a little bit scary i think we're going to see more gadget players coming up uh polishing for the gtfo fx uh grux it says reduce knockback distance when grux is stunned out of his charge now i'm not exactly sure what they're referring to but i have noticed that i charged before and I got sucked back to the area where I had initially activated the ability from. I just assumed that was lag. Maybe this is what they're referring to. I think the change most people were looking for with Grux is that they were going to make it so his pull distance was effective across the entire map. So you could spend, you could just stand in your spawn point, activate the pull, and it would actually activate and pull all the enemies in the map <laughs> into your base and get them killed. No, I'm just joking. All right. Um, Kalari, let's get into Kalari, let's get serious here guys. Um, Kalari, added intellect as a second infinity and increased slash damage from 42 to 50. Also increased the shadow walk damage boost gained when attacking from stealth. Uh, they've added a few points at all levels of that. Also crippling dagger has been adjusted so it's a little bit stronger in the first upgrade but uh, it's, or sorry, it's a little bit weaker in the first upgrade but it's stronger in the end game. So that's interesting. Fix some bugs with Death Sentence and remove Mana Regen as a non-recommended stat. Not a big deal. Uh, also, Howitzer here. They fixed Slow Grenades not being able to re during a blocking ability such as Make It Rain. And for Chimera, they said sometimes the Ambush was not dealing its AoE damage. I have noticed that as well. I, again, I just thought it was lag. Did a lot of updates for the tooltips to give more information on that. Also said sometimes call wasn't targeting Gideon. <laughs> Sorry, Gideon. <laughs> and also you can now call targets while they're standing on Harvester collection pads. Didn't do much for Murdoch except gave him the cool, awesome, crazy new skin. And just fixed up some audio and visual bugs. Also some video visual adjustments for Muriel. Rampage. 
of the awesome Obsidian Rampage skin. And here are some things here. Rampage can now enter an allied Decker's containment fence while enraged. And now this is a big one right here. I've actually died from this multiple times. Enraged now queues after leaping. So I have had this happen to me multiple times. I leap through the air, hit my ultimate, pick up my rock, and then start wondering why it didn't automatically throw. And then the next thing I know, as I'm trying to, <laughs> as I'm trying to throw my rock, I'm getting hit. I'm not moving, and then I realize that actually my ultimate didn't activate. So I'm assuming what that means is while you're in the air, you'll be able to hit your ultimate, and it'll trigger, I guess, as soon as you land. So that's a good change because I definitely died from that a few times. So happy to see that they are doing that. It says rampages bounce after enrage will also no longer cause players to get a double knockup. <laughs> Let's try to avoid those knockups, guys. Shock therapy for Richter. Corrected an issue where Richter's slow and silence could last longer than the tooltip indicated. I'm happy about that because I don't play Richter. Severog added Grand Oracle skin and that's in the game store. All right, Sparrow piercing shot added the ground targeting element to the piercing shot and fixed a missing audio impact. Steel. Again, uh, this ability can now be charged up while in the air. That is, or sorry, can be queued up while he's in the air, which again is scary because good steel players are very, very dangerous right now. But that's fair enough. Gotta fix those abilities. Gotta fix them up. And they added some graphical updates for the Fey, and added the Twin Blast skins and some visual effects. No nerf, no nerfs, no buffs for those characters. I know some guys were hoping for a little bit of love on Twin Blast. So these are definitely looking like some good changes. Let's take a look at some card changes. They've got quite a few card changes. So this week's cards, we've got Shepherd's File, Shockwave, and Scourging Tales. Those are the card for cards for this week's card pack. Card reworks. Interesting stuff here. A lot of stuff on these actives, and the first one we have is Plasma Channel. Now it is an AOE Energy Armor Shred to all enemies for four seconds with a 90 second cooldown. And the base stat is changed from lifesteal to max mana. So that's a, just, a, just a totally different card now. Totally, totally different card. Energy shred and mana. So it could be interesting, could be interesting. People may use that card. Uh, although most people are probably generally building as much energy pen as they already need or as much armor as they already need. So not sure, not sure how, how useful that is, but it could mean if your team is effectively team fighting, you could use a little bit less penetration if you can count on that. Uh, Scorpion Plate, it used to have a limit to how many stacks you could stack up that were shredding energy armor. Now you can stack as many as you want, which is pretty interesting. And they lowered the shred value to one point of energy pen per hit. So you gotta keep smacking away at them to drop that, to drop that armor. And the base stat has now been changed to max health. So I guess they just think people didn't have enough health and mana. <laughs> That's what everyone was stacking already, but I guess they're gonna go for more of it. Splinter Bark Vest. They also removed the stack restriction from that and lowered it to one point of physical pen. So basically the same thing. Cooldown is reduced to 45 seconds, also for a scorpion plate, which I didn't mention. And it's now max health instead of physical pen. Satori Cloak. Let's see, they changed it from an active to a passive. Very interesting. So in the old card, you gained physical penetration or energy penetration based on 50% of your armor. And now it is a passive. Wow, change from an active to a passive. Now applies shred to enemies for four seconds instead of granting penetration. I don't I don't know how it can do it for four seconds if it's only on a passive. Maybe you guys can explain that to me. Is it I don't know. I don't understand that guys. Is it always shredding? We'll have to take a look and see how that's gonna play out. Fire piercer. The old active was 160 energy pen, but no one was using that. New active 45% energy armor shred to the next enemy hero hit by a basic attack. So an interesting thing there is they said it's actually the next enemy that is hit. So if you miss a few basic attacks, it should still count. It doesn't just say on your next basic attack. It's the next time you hit someone. So if you miss a few, you're still all right. Rocket spike is pretty much the exact same thing except for physical armor. And the base stat has been changed to attack speed. Now for scourging tails... The old active was 6 seconds, you shred 80 physical armor, now they've increased the duration to 15 seconds, pretty good, and the cooldown is reduced to 45 seconds, so that is a pretty interesting ability right there, you can shred a lot of armor with that. Uh, changes to blink cards, players will retain momentum after using a blink card and the range has been fixed from 850 to 1000. 
and they've updated the card descriptions to include status effects for Bane Flesh, Tainted Magic, Siren Song, Victory Torch, and Blight Bones. Those all now have their descriptions of what they do written there. And they've got a second PS4 controller configuration called Competitive. So my guess would be that it's going to make it so that you can jump using the left bumper. That way you can jump and shoot without taking your thumb off the stick. That's just my guess. I don't know. That's for me coming from a first-person shooter background. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you feel about this game right now. And also, if you guys understand some of these card changes better than me, feel free to let me know. Some of these shreds, they have a lot of crazy things going on. I don't know the long-term implications of what some of this stuff is going to be. Being able to shred armor for 15 seconds every time you hit an ability. Iggy comes to mind. That could be insanely OP. You could be shredding all of someone's armor with that. Not really sure how all this stuff is going to play out, but it does seem that these changes are all a direct response to the tank meta which does make me a little bit concerned because it just, I don't know, instead of a long-term plan, it kind of seems like things are just being changed. Today's changes are to fix last week's uh, decisions. I'm not sure, you know, I don't know this game super well, guys, but that's just my kind of observation of what's going on. But I have actually been having a lot of fun playing recently now that the open beta matchmaking has balanced itself out a bit. I've been getting better matches. Still getting a lot of AFK players. Still getting about four AFKs for every ten matches. So it's pretty rough. But, but you know, I am having a good time with this game. So yeah, just let me know what you guys think about this. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to come hang out in some of my live streams. If you guys are expert players, uh, you can come and give me some tips. If you guys are beginner players, feel free to ask questions. I'm happy to answer them. And uh, I do rage at this game sometimes, only when people play AFK, but I do rage at this game sometimes. But you know, it's a game. The whole point is just to have fun and chill out, and, and it feels really good. This is one of the most fun games I've ever played when you're in a good match and you've got good teamwork. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys out there in Agora.